Poetry is a unique and expressive form of writing that uses language in a way that differs from prose. It is a way for people to convey their thoughts, emotions, and experiences through beautiful and rhythmic words. But what really makes poetry stand out? One key difference between poetry and prose lies in their respective structures. Prose follows a more traditional form, with paragraphs and sentences that flow naturally. Poetry, on the other hand, is broken up into lines and stanzas, creating a visual structure that adds to its impact. Another characteristic of poetry is its use of figurative language. Poets often employ devices such as metaphors, similes, and symbolism to add depth and meaning to their words. These literary techniques invite readers to explore the hidden layers of a poem and make connections beyond what is explicitly stated. When reading poetry, it's important to pay attention to both the denotative and connotative meaning of words. Denotative meaning refers to the literal definition of a word, while connotative meaning considers the emotions, ideas, or associations that a word may evoke. This interplay between denotation and connotation allows poets to create rich and nuanced expressions. Additionally, poets often use vivid and sensory language to engage the reader's senses. They may employ imagery, which paints a picture with words, to make their poems come alive in the reader's mind. This can be achieved through the use of similes, which compare two seemingly unrelated things using like, or as, or metaphors, which make a direct comparison without using these words. For added impact, poets utilize various rhythmic patterns and devices. These include parallelism, repetition, alliteration, antithesis, assonance, anaphora, hyperbole, and irony. These tools help establish a musical quality and create memorable lines that resonate long after the poem has been read. By understanding the techniques and devices employed, readers can appreciate the beauty and power of poetry in a deeper way. When it comes to poetry, there are two main styles, closed forms and open forms. Understanding the difference between them can help us appreciate the artistry and intention behind a poem. Closed forms refer to poems that have a set structure and follow certain rules. These can include sonnets, ballads, or haikus. These poems often have a specific rhyme scheme, meter, and stanza pattern. The poet has control over the language within these boundaries, manipulating rhythm, rhyme, and line length to create a particular effect. This form allows for a more focused and controlled expression of ideas. Open forms, on the other hand, offer more freedom to the poet. They don't follow a specific structure or rhyme scheme, allowing for greater experimentation and creativity. Free verse is a common example of open form poetry. In these poems, the poet has the liberty to play with line breaks, imagery, and language to convey their message. The lack of strict rules gives the poet a chance to explore emotions and ideas in a more spontaneous and fluid manner. When it comes to analyzing poetry, there are a few key tips to keep in mind. First, pay attention and read the poem slowly. Poetry is often layered with meaning, so taking the time to absorb each word and phrase is crucial. Listen to it openly without judgment, allowing the words to evoke emotions and create impressions. While reading, concentrate on the emotional meaning the poem conveys and be open to reacting and adjusting your understanding along the way. Every word, line, and stanza contributes to the overall impact of the poem, so don't overlook any detail. In fact, reading the poem out loud can help to fully appreciate its rhythm and musicality. By understanding the difference between closed forms and open forms in poetry and learning how to analyze it effectively, we can unravel the beauty and meaning behind the words, immersing ourselves in the poet's world and experiencing their artistry firsthand. Understanding how to perform poetry can be a bit frustrating at times. The meanings in poetry are often indirect and expressed using abstract language, which can make it difficult to grasp their full significance. That is why it is important to take the time to thoroughly understand a poem. When trying to understand a poem, there are several elements to consider. First, think about the subject of the poem. What is it about? Is there a particular theme or message that the poem is exploring? Next, consider the narrator of the poem. Who is speaking? Are they a character in the poem or the poet themselves? Understanding the perspective from which the poem is being presented can give you valuable insight. Think about the audience of the poem as well. Who is the poem intended for? Is it addressing a specific group of people or is it meant to be more universal? Pay attention to the diction of the poem, the specific words and phrases that are used. What is the effect of these choices? How do they contribute to the overall meaning and tone of the poem? 
Speaking of tone, consider the emotional atmosphere that the poem creates. Is it joyful, melancholic, or something else entirely? How does the poem make you feel and why? Be attuned to the rhythm of the poem as well. How do the words flow together? Does the poem have a regular meter or does it use more free verse? The rhythm can greatly impact the way the poem is experienced. Take note of any literary devices used in the poem, such as metaphor, simile, or personification. These devices can add layers of meaning and make the poem more engaging. And finally, think about the values that the poem explores. What does it prioritize or critique? What is it trying to say about the world or human experience? If all else fails, don't be hesitant to rewrite the poem in your own words. This can help you to understand it better and make the meanings more accessible. With careful consideration of these elements, you will be well on your way to understanding and performing poetry with confidence. Now that we have a basic understanding of poetry, let us now take a brief look at the most popular forms of poetry. Within the realm of poetry, various types and forms exist, each with its own distinctive characteristics and structures. First, we have couplets. A couplet is a two-line poem that usually rhymes. It can be serious or humorous, and it often expresses a complete thought. Next, we have ballads. Ballads are narrative poems that tell a story. They often have a memorable rhythm and are accompanied by music. Moving on, we have haikus. Haikus originated in Japan and are known for their brevity. They consist of three lines with a five, seven, five-syllable pattern. Haikus typically focus on nature and evoke emotions. Then, we have limericks. Limericks are humorous poems with a specific rhyme scheme and rhythm. They have five lines and often feature silly characters and funny situations. Sonnets are another type of poetry. Sonnets have 14 lines and a specific rhyme scheme. They usually explore themes like love, beauty, or deep emotions. Finally, we have quatrains. Quatrains are four-line poems that can have various rhyme schemes. They are versatile and can be serious or light-hearted. Understanding these different types of poems can enhance our appreciation for the art of poetry. Whether it's the concise beauty of a haiku or the playful rhythm of a limerick, there is something for everyone to enjoy in the world of poetry. And with that we will conclude our lecture. We have gone over the basic understanding of poetry and the unique uses of its language and meaning, as well as its uses of rhythm, imagery, and abstractions. We also covered how to analyze poetry to begin understanding how to perform it, as well as its different forms. Although shorter than prose, poems can carry stories, emotions, and depth just as much as any long novel. What one author can tell in a few hundred pages, a well-skilled poet can tell in one. Take the time to research and discover poems that not only you can relate to, but that you can perform in a way that will affect your audience.